All right, I thought I'd show uh, one of my other hobbies and uh, my conversion from my 3D printer over to my uh, linear rails. All right, so what I've done basically is um, there's some cheap kits out there, but I went in and kind of and modeled my own. Um, the carriage for the bed. So I went and bought some rails and uh, I've used uh, this stuff here. I don't remember the name but it's called Super Lube and basically there's just a couple things that I was going to point out for oh let me basically doing this kind of conversion yourself is that uh, so where these extrusions are mounted to um, I guess the, the box or the frame here is that the bolt head stands proud of the surface so in order to mount the rail to it what I've done is um, when we come in here and take these out excuse my um, mess because I'm doing some work obviously to do a conversion to a direct drive and that's been working for a while pretty well so but while I'm getting this the biggest reason you would do a conversion to a linear rail like this has to do with accuracy on the um, on the y-axis because normally you have uh, wheels that have an eccentric nut on each side and these wheels are wear items whereas when you have a linear slide you're not going to get much play uh, the friction for moving it back and forth is significantly lower so um, you just get better accuracy and basically you have parts that you're not going to um, need to replace very often so hopefully this comes in but basically there's a little lock washer um, you could get the same size bolts just put them in there uh, only thing that I'd recommend is like a a medium or low strength thread locker. This is the stuff that I've used. I don't know if it's going to come into focus very well, but it's called Vibratite. It's basically blue like all the other stuff. Um, just a medium strength. So we'll put take this little washer off so I don't have to buy new bolts. That'll go back in. And uh, what you're seeing right here is that um, the nuts that I've gotten for this extrusion, they need to all go past this bolt first. Because you can see if we put them on the bottom of the extrusion and then try and slide them in, they're not going to fit. So this, those three will need to go past. Um, and then I'll actually take this off. I've already loosened some of them. And uh, you have to loosen these eccentric nuts, which I've already done. And then the carriage comes off nice and easy. So this one is steel, and obviously you can see you've got quite a few wheels for rollers on there. Um, I don't know if it'll come in great, but I was already seeing wear with these ones, trying to maintain those. So... Uh, what I like to do is just upgrade as I need to, essentially. So one of the things that you'll see here is that um, I actually have it where it'll go this exact way, just like that. Um, I got this laser cut from a place called Send Cut Send. And as long as you have a program that you can do modeling, you just send them a DXF file, DXF, or a bunch of other different file types that basically give them a two-dimensional pattern and they can laser cut it and they can do stuff for um, a really low minimum order uh, dollar amount. So that's what I did for this and basically I designed in the what you see here where the belt mounts. I've just designed that into it so what I'm going to do is bend this down and then this piece right here will kind of bend back up 
to hopefully add some rigidity to it because I don't know how much force actually goes on this. So this part was just an experiment to try something new um, for myself. So I'll just kind of let the camera roll, I think, and try and put the rest of it together. I have my bed over here. I'll show you kind of what I'd call my uh, ultimate solution for bed mounts uh, when I go to put it back together. Okay, so you can see that uh, I got a little bit of struggle. So I used a six millimeter bolt for all these. And um, you can see I basically went every um, two holes. And it's a six millimeter uh, M3 for the carriages and for um, this one with the nuts that I was using. So I elected to use, okay, if you can see this, this style of um, the nut that has to be slid in from this compared to the ones that you can just kind of push down and twist into place just because when you're tightening them down they have a tendency to tr to rotate around and it can be challenging to tighten them down um, when I actually get everything squared up to make sure that I have good travel back and forth um, when these sides are all in I will come back with some of that um, that low strength uh, Loctite, which is probably, the Loctite is probably overkill, but considering the resonance from all the motors and everything like that, any amount of vibration, probably good for long-term reliability to just Loctite them into place. All right, uh, I'm not quite sure where I left off on this, but um, obviously, um, took a little bit to get these rails in place uh, and the other thing that I kind of screwed up we'll see if I can actually get a picture of it um, so this bracket I tried to make it so that I could bend it down and um, I measured wrong so I ended up having to just cut it off and then I used a spacer yeah I used some spacers to um, make sure that the belt was level essentially but um, yeah, tighten all these down. Um, what I've found is that um, these are 450 millimeter rails. So if you um, push them all the way up against the end, uh, you have just enough space. But basically, this piece isn't going to fit on there. So essentially, what you can do is come in and either uh, notch this and use the same plate or um, just print another one um, to cover this measure the one that's on here um, print it so you just keep this piece covered up or you can do whatever you want to do the next part I'll show just kind of what I did for um, my bed here is uh, I took a uh, jam nut and basically I turned it all the way down there and I tightened it up and what I have is actually and the reason I use a jam nut is because it kind of fits within this little recess that is on these silicone mounts so these will go right over that little jam nut and what I did is I have a wicking 
uh, thread locking compound. So tighten them down, put a little drop, and it wicks in there. All right, so I can't really do that with one hand, but you can now see the setup. Um, oh, yeah, the other thing, that little blue piece, that was just like a flat piece with an M4 thread in it. That lines up with the limit switch that's on the back. So it uses the stock limit switch location. And um, one of the things that I did in before was I actually had these. Um, I designed these and laser cut them. And one of the interesting things, oops, a little bright, that I did is I actually just pressed an M4 nut, a locking nut into it. So essentially, to make sure that they don't run into it, I'll see if I can do this with one hand. The reason that I use one of those nylon locking nuts is the fact that then when you, um, okay, I got to get it started. Okay, so since I have it started on there, basically the benefit of it being one of those locking nuts is now, um, it's not going to, this adds a lot of resistance. So it's not going to vibrate free at all. I know that you're supposed to, that, you know, that you get tension from this and everything, but um, I kind of wanted to double up to make sure that once I set my level, that there isn't going to be much flex. So, um, yeah, this was custom laser cut. This was another laser cut piece. Everything is just from aluminum. There's maybe some lighter choices, but I'm thinking that we're probably chasing after some diminishing returns here for um, lightness. So next step is going to be um, probably a linear rail on this guy because I don't really have any uh, Z issues because I um, so I have these anti-backlash nuts and I've leveled the gantry and everything but um, yeah so that's kind of this stuff and um, seems to work just fine so I'll get the rest of it set up and maybe run a test part real quick